It's good, good, good to see you. Thank you for joining me tonight. I am very happy to be here, and I'm very happy that you are here. Um, just a quick thing up top, if you end up liking this video, please consider subscribing. It would mean the world to me, and if you're already subscribed, then thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, tonight we are doing a book call. I have, I didn't count before actually, I think, maybe nine, um, that I'm excited to share with you tonight. So, given the number, I think let's just jump on in. Okay, the first book is Bliss Montage. They are short stories by Ling, 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 Ling Ma. She is the author of Severance. There's Severance the TV show and then Severance the book, which I think they're making into a movie, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me. She is the author of the book, of course, which is um like a zombie-filled, post-apocalyptic, I am a lonely woman who still kind of like goes back to her office sometimes kind of thing. And city kind of vibe. This book, on the other hand, I don't know what these stories are about per se, but I trust her to have done a good job. It says, what happens when fantasy tears the screen of the everyday to wake us up? Could that waking be our end? In Bliss Montage, Ling Ma brings us eight wildly different tales people making their way through the madness and reality of our collective delusions. Love and loneliness, connection and possession, friendship, motherhood, the idea of home. For example, a woman lives in a house with all of her ex-boyfriends. So, I think it's going to be a fun one. The colors are also gorgeous. Speaking of ex-boyfriends, my college boyfriend, sorry, my high school boyfriend hated the word bliss. He thought it sounded creepy. So, I'll let you know how that goes. Um, not my ex-boyfriend, the story collection. And then we have a book that, in truth, bought for my partner as a Christmas gift, but I'm going to include it in this haul because I intend to read it also. And why would we ever gift a book to someone we loved if we didn't intend to snag it later? Unless we've already read it, but this I have not read. It is all about love. By Bellocks. Bellocks. We also have Feminism is for Everybody by Bellocks. The Bellocks. So, the word love is most often defined as a noun, yet we would all love better if we used it as a verb. This is what Bell Hooks writes as she comes out fighting and on fire in All About Love. Here, at her most provocative and intensely personal, the renowned scholar, cultural critic, and feminist skewers our view of love as romance. In its place, she offers a proactive new ethic for a people and a society bereft So actually, as I film this, my partner is in the other room with nothing to do, because usually when I film, if he's home, he'll read, and he's in the middle of this book. Um, but I stole it for this video for you. Don't say, I never do anything for us, okay? Um. 
um, I'm very excited about a new way to think about love. I have said, I think, on this channel before, but I think it all the time, and I say it all the time in my life, that I think that we could all do well to treat our romantic partners a little more like friends, just in terms of, like, um, that platonic care, giving the benefit of the doubt, showing up, supporting, um, being a listening ear, and not taking advantage of, right? We could all do well to treat our romantic partners a little more like our best friends, and to treat our best friends a little more like our romantic partners, where we do special things for them just freaking cuz, um, where we run errands with them, we do acts of service for them, we surprise them, um, we gift to them, we do favors for them, etc. So, yeah, I'm not sure what angle she takes in this book, but I know it will be amazing, because it's about looks. Okay, then here's another book that I, um, for my partner this holiday season. This is one that I have read before, um, but like ages ago, my good college friend recommended it to me, and I loved it. It's an essay sort of book um, about music and lowbrow, highbrow culture, how lowbrow culture is as valid as highbrow culture. I love this book so much. Um, so I intend to reread it. My copy of it got lost in the mail, so I'm really excited we have it in our home. It's a 33 and a third book, which, if you don't know, it's just a series of books, kind of essays, where one writer, it's always a different writer, dissects one musical album, always a different album, and they can take any tack they want. Like, some people talk about what it was like to record the album, some people talk about the influences of the album, the historical context. There's one about Is, Is, I see, the Hawaiian singer. You've almost assuredly heard his cover of Somewhere voice, beautiful musician, and that one talks about Is and his album, but also like poverty in Hawaii in a way that is just uh, very eye-opening. This one is talking about, let's talk about love. It is a um, an album by Celine Dion. That's what it's called. Let's talk about love. And it's called Carl Wilson. So, it's about what I said it was about, but let's see. Um, the music of bands such as U2 or Rage Against the Machine um, is as inspirational or motivational as Celine's, but for different subcultural groups. It, has, it is just as one-sided and unsubtle. Morally, you could fairly ask, what is more laudable about excess in the name of rage and resentment than immoderation in the thrall to love and connection? The likely answer would be that Celine is conformist, quiescent, quiescent, and subversive. Subversion, today, is sentimentality's reverse. Subversion, today, is sentimentality's reverse. So basically, like, so many people love Celine, but, like, why do so many unpacks it all and it's like you could give this book to anyone and it will be relevant because it just talks in a very smart way about culture at large and I highly recommend. Alright, next up we have Checkout 19. She wrote Pond, P-O-N-D, 
which is this other really lovely book that is um, highly focused on sensory detail and like small moments, like the unit of time and action is very like small, granular, beautiful, heightened in its, um, its beauty and its reverence, reverence, yeah, I would say, like even the woman taking a bath, it's like then details are given and they're all really poetic and, um, evocative. And, yeah, she writes in a mostly plotless way, I would say, which I do not think is better or worse than a plot-driven book, and I highly enjoy her writing style. This book I've started reading, I'm only this far in, right there, um, but so far I think it's about a woman's relationship with books. I think she learns to love them, but so far as a child she's just told a story about how Nobody really cared much about books in her elementary school, and they all had books that were given to them as part of class, but then they never returned them. So to get to them, get them to return them, the school offered them chocolate bars in exchange for the books. Um, and then the kids realized they could get free chocolate, so they would break back into the room, open the box, get the books they had already returned, and pretend they were returning them anew. I thought was funny. Yeah, so still haven't finished it. Not very far at all. But if you like um, poetic language in your novels, then I might check that one out. Or check out Bond. It's very good. Then I have a book from New York Review Books. Um, it's funny because a subscriber mentioned in a comment the I should check this one out, and I was like, I legit just bought it. I'm so excited to read it. And that would be a gorgeous color. So, subdued and yet slightly. Oh, I really love it. Um, so it's called My Phantoms by Gwendolyn. On the back it says, Helen Grant is a mystery to her daughter, an extrovert with few friends who has sought intimacy in the wrong places, a twice divorced mother of two now living alone, surrounded by her memories. Helen, who is known to her acquaintances as Hen, has always haunted Bridget. Now Bridget is an academic in her 40s. She sees Helen once a year and considers the problem to be contained. As she looks back on their tumultuous relationship, the performances and small deceptions, she tries to reckon with the cruelties inflicted on both sides. But when Helen makes it clear that she wants more, it seems an old struggle will have to be replayed. Yeah, that sounds really good. In general, you can't really go on, go wrong. You can't really go wrong with a I finally just choose really interesting projects to, I think, I don't know if everything they publish is republished, but often they are older works that they republish, and they just choose excellent pieces with very um, distinct and often compared to like stuff coming out today, very unique points of view and worldviews styles. Then we have a book that I've already read that I quite enjoyed that has a great cover but in my opinion has a total twinkly sweat. Like I, it has a terrible title. Uh, but don't let that deter you if you're interested. It's a book of essays called The Unreality of Memory by She's also a poet, and she's quite good. Um, the 
this title for me just feels really abstract. There's like nothing to hold on to, you know? Like it just leaves your head instantly. So that's why I don't like the, the title. It's like, what does it mean? It's not very um, inviting. It's not very exciting. It's not very memorable. But maybe I'm holding to her to do higher standard because she's a poet. But um, basically, these are essays about disaster and how we think about disaster. So, like the first part or section has essays on, let's see, like the Titanic and how disaster has to be unexpected and publicly witnessed, how the media plays a role in promoting it in a way that's unhelpful, of course, but she really gets into it, um, about looking at yourself in the mirror, how none of us are exactly symmetrical, um, which you probably already knew, but the way she writes about it is, this is her, is, um, yeah, quite good. Like, I found it, I found it, like, it's kind of like when you're reading some publication online and you stumble across a pretty good essay about a topic you weren't really looking for. It's like a bunch of those put together and in a physical book. So, to my mind, it's more fun to read with coffee or at night with tea. And it just feels like a collection of and really enjoyable essays. So, enjoyable essays, I should say, about like pretty downer topics. But <laughs> okay, and then we have two more books. I guess I'll go with this one next because I don't have much to say about it. But I got at the bookstore Man and His Symbols. I like the sound on these like mass market paperbacks. by Carl Jung. My favorite part of this cover is that here it says profusely illustrated. Yeah, I think that's so funny for some reason. And, you know, it does, it has its fair share of illustrations, so I appreciate that for a book called Man and His Um, yeah, and then the last book I found actually in a tiny library close to my place. When I went for a run, I found it, and it was at the beginning of my run. I just happened to, I chanced to see it in the tiny library. And when I was running, I was so nervous that someone else was going to take it that I ended up cutting my run short no one to get it. Um, it's just a story collection from Otessa Moshvig, who brought us My Year of Rest and Relaxation, um, La Bovna, I think you say it. I haven't read that one. And she also brought us Eileen, other fun, often like very pulpy feeling novels, but I've never read a short story by her. And I hear that any issue you might take with a novel of hers for its, like, uh, lack of tightness or, like, pulpiness is extra, extra, um, powerful in the shorter form of, like, the short story. Let me tell you what it's called. It's called I also think this cover is so in keeping with what I find in her work to be like a sort of pulpy quality. So excited to read it, excited that I got it for free. Um, if I love it, I'll keep it, but I'm not sure if I will, so it may be one that I just pass on again. 
I'm constantly dropping off books on my tiny library. Um, so thus concludes our book haul. Uh, if you picked up any new books lately, please feel free to let me know. I love to know what you're reading. I hope you're doing super, super. I'll see you very soon, and until then, good night.